you're Rana, and welcome to FN Tahiti. I hope you're all doing well. Um, apologies in advance for this episode if there are any kind of uh, weird sort of sound issues. Uh, it's just because I've got a new microphone set up, so I've got a kind of, what's it called, a Marantz microphone, a professional or the pod pack one, uh, whatever it is. And a bit of weird warning coming up on my computer. Um, and I just thought I'd give it a go. I've been using like a Logitech headset. Um, She's good in that it keeps the microphone in a certain distance, but I kept like smacking it against my face and making weird noises and it's it wasn't the greatest microphone. I just wanted to kind of up the sound quality a bit. So I've been playing around with the filters, the noise gates, the suppression, the gain, that kind of stuff. Um through OBS and stuff like that. So I don't know whether I actually got it quite right. So this episode, next couple of episodes might just be me tweaking it a little bit. because uh, I've not had actually a huge amount of time to play with it. It arrived and then I've not actually been able to play FM for about a week after um, that. I've just been having a really tricky couple of weeks um, just finding time for things. So I got it all set up and it was attached to the desk and all that jazz um, and I just had a chance to play. So here we go. So in this episode we're going to play in the humpbacks. I'm explaining the humpbacks. We're going to go through the uh, media interaction. Uh, what I normally tend to do, and I just wanted to go into a bit more detail, is I normally tend to respond calmly by default to most things. I don't want to rile anyone particularly up, but because we're against the humpbacks, we might change this a little bit. So I'm going to go passionately here. Um, I don't know what effect this will actually have. Um, but yeah, I agree. So the humpbacks have actually, I think every season since I've left, they've fired a manager or let them go at the end of the contract, even if they've won something. Uh, and even if they're quite experienced uh, managers as well. So yeah, it's ridiculous. Keep keep the faith. Um, so I think it's going to be disrespectful to the board. No? No? I think so. Yeah, I don't think it's disrespectful. Supporting a fellow professional. Um, unwarranted. He's actually quite a good manager in the game. He's, he's too bad. Yeah. Fouls, I love committing fouls. It means we're getting stuck in and destroying them. It does mean we lose players quite often. No way we're going down. We're having some really successful season. I think it's I hate that injury one because it's, yeah, obviously staying injury free is a good thing. We could go top, would be a statement of intent. That we're going to keep it up all the way through the season, but it'd be good. I take a while for them to get their sharpness back. Tamangara is indeed a great lad, a great giant lad. Let's see how we do against them in this match. Um, I think as well, in one of the previous videos, I mentioned an article I'd written for Dictate the Game about comparing you know, statistically a few of the different tactics uh, they had. Ooh, what's going on? Oh, so Ahmed Smith used to play for us when we were in charge of the Humpbacks. And obviously we've dived back in there. And I'm going to sign him because he's actually agreed now to 600... £75 per week rather than just like 1.5 thousand he wanted. So like half a season of just sat on the beach, not playing, not getting paid has kind of got to him. So we're going to take him on because we're in the OCL obviously and it would be nice if we could win it first time of asking, but we need to improve the kind of keeper situation if we can and we know he's good enough for this level. We know he can win titles. So that's why we're going to go for him. Um, but yeah, as I was mentioning, um, I did say there was an article that was going to be going live, I think on a Friday, um, where I statistically compare these tactics you can get and dictate the game. That's not actually gone out yet. It's written, it's ready, it's going to be going out in a week to, uh, about a week and a half, I think. So that's not there yet. You, you can't find it. It's just not gone out yet. So where are we? Our record, we have never beaten the Humpback. Seven appearances against them. They've beaten us five times out of the seven. And this could be the first, maybe, hopefully. We're playing at home, a breezy 33 degrees, 800 sold out of 800. This could be our first sellout, actually, in the stadium. Interesting. I don't know why this is all... Oh, that's why, yeah. So, obviously, this sometimes worries me. We think, oh, actually, why is this red now for this player? Why is he no good? It's because it's comparing them to the strength of the players in the opposition side on on that side of the pitch as well so actually whoever they've got in the sort of right hand side of their defense needs to be better than Bauman so let's make a few changes let's bring on Lamb left back we've not had him for a bit there um 
Manuel can come off a of Bowman. We've got that relationship going on there. Chidi Bang. Bring on for Wallace. It's been a while for Chidi. Or as uh, I was mentioning in one of the comments for the previous videos, uh, Chidi Chidi Bang Bang, we love you. I think that's going to have to be the chant for him. I do love that film as well. Um, so on the right hand side, let's bring on Minan because Bray is suspended. Bring money in the bench. There's not. Let's start Ahmed Smith against his former team. Controversial. Bring Taylor as well. Uh, and bring on Mernier for Kerr, actually. Better to have fresh legs on the bench, potentially. Um, we'll go with this, I think. Um, Chidi and Tamangara have got a nice link there. He's probably about as strong as a team we're going to get, or we're going to be able to get at this stage. I've not tried to sign anyone other than Smith, I don't think. And I've not tried to sell anyone on or anything. So I've had a few offers coming in for a couple of players, like fringe players but I kind of want to keep things together until the end of the season because we'll have a bump in reputation and things like that we might be able to get much better players if we wait there's no rush as it stands they've got Karen up front Clement Karen who looks good at 19 and um, Elatra who looks good they go for 4-4-1 we've got Moses Dalloway who we know about we know about Riviera as well we tried to sign him several times. He's good. Um, Porter's good. We tried to sign him. We've looked at all these players in previous matches, I think. Uh, Killian Rousset is a good keeper. Luca Bars on the bench. as his Bouvelle that we know about. But obviously no Yannin. No Gerard because they've got rid of them. No Andre because they've got rid of them as well. Right, so let's go passionate. We are the underdogs, even though we could go top with this. Um... We are still definitely the underdogs in this kind of situation. Let's see how we get on. It is weird playing against the humpbacks. Just because we played so many matches with them that you automatically think, oh, we're the ones in blue. But no, we're the ones in their fancy purple and yellow. Good, good kit combination. <coughs> Sorry. That's one of the problems with this microphone, actually. If I need to cough, I can't just mute it. There's no mute button that I can find. Long ball in. Picking it up again. Oh, Manuel. So Manuel used to play for them. Spearling used to play for them. Interesting ball. They're knocking it around fairly confidently. They've not threatened yet, but it's only two minutes in. Oh, there we go. Cursed. I mean, that was a good finish. Well done, Smith. Thanks for trying. I was going to say they're not threatening. It's only two and a half minutes in. They've not literally not the chance. First attack is successful. All this this way and that. Which I thought is quite surprising with a 4 1 1. So their strikers drifted off, pulled us one way, and then they're, I'm assuming, like a shadow striker behind the Latra has popped in. Maybe it's something we could try. I'm struggling a bit tactically at the moment in some of my other saves. I've got like a the offline save I mentioned from time to time. I'm struggling to find a, a tactic I like for them. On Spearling. Tamangara to no one. Put in the pressure, but. The ball's bouncing backwards and forwards a lot. That's not. Karen's free. Skewed it wide, but a bit, bit worrying. From the brief glimpses we've seen for our team, I'm not confident we're actually going to attack them properly. It says three shots we've had, and one on target just like them, but we've not seen anything good. A lot of aimless balls forward as well. Hmm. Yep, not much going on there. 
I might try and change things tactically next season as well. We've been playing this tactic for a while. The Just Keep Swimming one works quite nicely. Um, it's really got us overperforming, I think. We might have to see what players we get in, and rather than just fitting players into the tactic we want to play, we might have to see what's available to us. I would like to see a better showing in the second half, because it's been kind of pants. I think normally in Football Manager, I like to set up a style, set up a tactic, and stick to it, and recruit to it, and play to it, and you know, have that kind of philosophy. Um... But this database, this saves a little bit different in that we have such a limited pool. It's not like I have lots and lots of players to choose from. It means I'm probably going to need to be a bit more flexible if I want to make this kind of final push with the wings. Or I'm just going to have to keep kind of like overperforming, doing well in the OCL and hopefully winning it and get some money in that way until we can eventually select most of the players or have most of the players interest in joining us. John Bon spearling in. Amangara. Chidi's injured. Interesting. Right. Wallace on against Row 2 we used to play for. Who else? Minan's a little bit tied on the right. Let's put on Jason Taylor. Who's not particularly special. He's one of the youth products, I think. No, he's not. He's not a youth product, because we don't have youth products, and he's not Austral Island, so he's not a youth product of Rora 2. Try that, and then put Huit. Oh, not Huit. Yeah, no. Something wrong with my mouse, I think. Huit on for Spearling in that Mazala role. From looking at a lot of the articles in the community at the moment, there's a lot of love for the Mazala. It's a really good role, I think. It's not what I naturally gravitated towards until I started looking around at what other people were using, but it if you tend to find a lot of space, they are quite good. And the match stats make you look like there's not much between us, but we've not threatened at any point. I know it says we've no clear-cut chances and no half chances, but that's the way the match stats calculate that isn't actually very good or very clear for the most part. So I tend not to rely on that, but just from the highlights, we've not had anything particularly that was terrible. Jean Baptiste messing up. Bon clearing it, he did alright there. And that's it. Final whistle, there was one good clear cut chance. They maybe had another. We've lost, that's fine. I don't feel we were, were cheated or anything. It was very close though. Draw would have been kind of fair as well, I think, but it is what it is. It's one of those days, I guess, in that we weren't good, but they weren't good either. Um, what match should we play next? What have we got on the schedule? We've got the Hang of Vines, the Mutiny Trophy. I'm not going to play that um, because we're top. We'll come back for the Eels instead so we can see what's going to happen to the um, table because it's quite, quite tight at the top there, 38, 38, 37. So we'll be back in just a second to play that. Okay, so we are back for the eels match uh we played um Bahanga in between and we beat them three nil um chitty chitty bang bang getting a brace in that match along with jean baptiste getting a goal and um, so we were always gonna be top of that group anyway it was a kind of nothing match i didn't actually rest that many players because quite a big gap between some of the games um so everyone's still quite fresh i say that they're probably not recovered now but there we go Let's see I think some training issues there. I might need to sort out the schedule. Uh, right hand side, let's put in Paul Cox, who is uh, nothing special, but um, he's a youth product of the uh, previous side. Put Muller on the bench. Put Frey back in for Minan. Get Minan on for Taylor. Keep that kind of fresh, I guess. And not much else for us to change really apart from bringing on Kerr for Mernier. I think that's pretty much everything covered. The eels are kind of up there in the table. They're a good good side. We tried I think I tried to get him at one point. He's very good. Giddis Kagup. Good name. Uh they got Posman, Oliver Martin. Olivia Martin? Yeah Oliver Martin he's good. I think he might be a bit wasted on the wing. Uh 
Rush used to play for us when we were at Humpbacks. I think he's quite good. They pack the midfield. So there we go. Big shake of the hands. I have a feeling we're not going to win this one. Um, just because now in the league we're on a bit of a bad run because we obviously lost against what was that. It looked like he took him down quite nicely there. Vinnie Jones would have been proud with that one. First minute crunch. Yeah, I think the Eels are in good form. They are one of the bigger sides. They've got a good history of success. Um, got that going for them. And also, yeah, we've lost against... Oh, good ball in. Took far too much time. You should have shot first time or something like that. Fortunate to get a corner off it. Actually, that was, so that's quite a good move. And Baptiste Lamb coming in. Good effort. Not quite. Through the back of him, off. Come on. Nah. Yeah, I think the Eagles are just better than us, and we're not in the greatest form. That, that loss will have hurt our morale a little bit. Smith, like a ninja. We'll see. Good long ball. Smith knows how to do those. He's had seasons and seasons of doing that for us when we were at Humpbacks. Manuel running in. Oh, good ball in. Salangara couldn't finish that, but that was a nice run and a nice pass in. Really good effort. They're passing around well though. Kakup's free. Good save by Smith. Not quite sure how he managed to like save it in that direction, but he did. Maggie doesn't get it out far enough. Kagup comes back in. Poznan. What? I mean, that is good. We are definitely watching that one again. That is an amazing, amazing goal there. Nothing as well. So Poznan back to Kagup. And Mallow just gets free and. Beautiful. And the referee should just bring the match to a close now because that goal was so good, I don't want to win. Yeah. I'm still kind of in shock. That's a beautiful goal. And well in. Tamangara completely offside. In fact, not just Tamangara, there's at least two other players who are offside as well. Right, okay. So the way I have some of the uh, free kicks and set pieces set up is if you go for the short option but have lots of players forward, the defender who comes to try and get rid of the short option, if you get them in the right position, can often play the players that you've got up front on. Oh, Jean-Baptiste. Kind of out of nothing. That's Tamangaro being the creator there. A good pass on him for a big man. Good run by Frey. Tamangara gets his long legs involved. Just chips it in. He knows someone's going to be in there. And as much as I like the pass, I still want us to lose a little bit because Malo's gold was too good. Far too good. In fact, after this match, I'm going to look at his attributes and see if he's worth putting on the shortlist because that was a banger. We're back in it. How long we'll see. But we're back in it. Cag up through. Our defence is terrible. And it's a good finish as well, but he keeps getting through. And it's the bit we really need to kind of shore up. Like, I'm happy with Wallace and Chidi and Tamangara. Even Chabert and Huit up front. They're all good. They'll all get goals. They all get enough goals as well to help us challenge for a title, but that centre of defence, we've got Maggie and Stroud, and Stroud's more of a defensive midfielder, really. Maybe I need to bring um, a Mikhail Muller in instead. After a bit, past couple of seasons, not just in this save, but in my um, 
kind of offline one where I've been going around the UK doing a journeyman that's in like the year 2038 now. Getting my defense sorted out has been the hardest bit I found. And I normally find it quite hard to get a good keeper. I really find the whole kind of recruitment and training of keepers difficult. Um, bring on Muller anyway to get him fit. Minan. Uh, bring on Kerr for Spearling. Yeah, defense is a real struggle to recruit for. Keepers I always kind of struggle with. But even in this other save I've got going on, there was. I managed to get Warrington, who were newly gone for A. So I took over Warrington, who were promoted to the Vanarama North, as a previously unplayable team. I bounced off the crossbar, couldn't get it out. Got them promoted all the way up to League 2, survived the first season in League 2, and then was kind of surviving the next season in League 2, and then I moved on to, to Preston. But what happened when I was with Warrington was, I think that season I survived League 2, I survived by being the, the place above the relegation zone. And I was about six points clear in the end. Another goal for them. You didn't get rid of it in time. Bryce Rush. And our defence just not... No one kept up with them for that second ball. I feel a bit bad for Arne because he's been made to look like a little bit of a fool, but really it's... Oh, go on, Kerr. Lucky goal, lucky bounce, I think. Here's the defence issue there. So yeah, with Warrington, we had kind of similar problems where we could score. We could get two goals in a match. Easy, like we've got here. But we would concede a lot. So we were in the top three for goals scored, but we were the top for the most conceded. We conceded more than the relegated teams. By a mile. It was shameful. Genuinely shameful. Let's bring on Wallace. But yeah, the defence was just the issue. We were kind of almost in again and I'm not I think partly maybe it's just recruitment maybe I'm not recruiting defenders as well as I need to and I'm not looking at the right things for a kind of complete player for the tactics I, I need to play or maybe there's something tactically that's just leaving them more and more exposed I'm not sure but I, have, I think for FM19 that's been my struggle FM18 was definitely keepers um FM17, I think I struggled to get decent strikers, but. Eight minutes or so left. I don't think we're going to get back in this. Yeah, I think FM16, I don't know what I struggled with. I don't think I played FM16 in. Oh, there we go. Another goal. My love. He's, he's a good player. Round of applause for the man. 4 2 is more than fair. I think, as a result. And again. Got free. Had plenty of time and space. Less than ideal. Ah, he's not offside. Rush on a 9.2 as well. He's been doing quite good. Two assists and a goal. FM15, though, I don't think I had any issues with any position. I was just an absolute god at FM15. <laughs> Some very successful saves in that one. Maybe FM15 was just a bit too easy, though. Uh, do I pass back? Get it forward. There we go. So we have lost. We have lost fair and square. That very first goal was an amazing wonder goal, and I'm going to look at it again. There is he, so uh, he looks kind of okay. Let's scout him. Where's he come from? So Mopia player developed. He's been in the game for a while. Left midfielder with only 19 career league assists and 30 goals. He's not prolific. So if, if we ended up signing him, I don't think we'd see those kind of goals day in and day out, but we will see it one more time. I see. Trying to click on it, but I can't. Because, you know. Why would we? 
Why is this review not? Why can't I just click on the goal? Play the match again. the goal. I want this. This one. This. Oh yeah, it's from this. There we go. So good. Look at that. It's a bit like the one I think it was Yannin scored seasons and seasons ago for the humpbacks for us. You don't see many of them, but when you do, they're worth well worth watching. Oh, let's stop this. I need to see the rest of this. Poor, poor display. So what does that do to the league table? So after 19 games, we've got 37 points. And we're in third. Um, potentially, we could go down to fourth if the humpbacks also um, win their game in hand. Again, we could even go down as far as fifth if Huyin do on goal difference. It's an interesting race. Maria, Chance, Us, Humpbacks, Huyin are all kind of in this one, but we're in the OCL as well. So I imagine... Being in the OCL is going to, you know, take us slightly off the pace. Just a, just a tad. Just a tad. Uh, but we'll end there. Thanks very much for watching. Um, thanks for putting up with any microphone issues we might have. I don't know what the gain's going to be like on this. Um, hopefully, it's been good enough. But yeah, I will see you for the next episode. Thanks very much.